Good evening, esteemed members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. I do wish to welcome you to this week's uh, webinar. First and foremost, is to tell you happy customer service week. You are truly our customers and truly our members. We do wish to host you tonight uh, for this wonderful uh, webinar. It is in partnership with uh, Centonomy. And the webinar today is on, uh, the meeting today is on, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a happy customer service week webinar. Just to appreciate you, today we shall be discussing you and your money, conversations on uh, managing money. I believe uh, my colleague is, my colleague Ezron is here. So I will probably ask you to, I'll probably ask you to, I'll probably ask all of us to drop on the, on the chat box. Let me see if the chat box is activated. On the chat box, can you let me know which part of the country you are joining us from? Which part of the country you're joining us from? On the chat box, which part of the country are you joining us from? On the chat box, which part of the country are you joining us from? We begin our meeting at 7.10 or not before 7.10 uh, or uh, the closest we get to 200. I can see uh, the esteemed honorable treasurer, Dr. Angelina Choka, who shall be giving our, uh, who shall be giving the uh, opening remarks today. Uh, she is in the meeting. Welcome so very much, Madam Treasurer, Dr. Angeline. Uh, Dr. Joan Kadesa from Kakamega County, welcome so very much. Teresa from Samburu, uh, Safin Gobi from uh, Kasarani, Dr. Bernard Kibet from Nyamira, Dr. Shoksha from Kisumu, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Gazua, Mombasa, that is Malibu Pharmacy, Dr. Loren Chemtai, Nairobi, Dr. Glory Mbabu, uh, the great pharmacist from Kiambu County. Uh, Dr. Karen Kageni from, uh, um, Kitui, uh, from Kitui, that is Lower Eastern PSK. Dr. Wendy Nyamusana uh, from uh, PSK Kijabe. Uh, welcome so very much today, Dr. Terry. Thank you for joining us. First, this is to say thank you and a happy customer service week. This is only, uh, this has been made possible uh, just as a thank you note uh, from PSK saying Asante San. I can see Mushimiwa Oscar Shamala. Uh, I know he's joining us from Isip Samburu, uh, from Trokana, Karibu Sana, Dr. Joel Chebon, Kevicho, Karibu Sana, Lydia from Embu, Mr. Victor Owaga from uh, Good Life Kakamega. Welcome so very much. As members are joining us right now. I do wish to uh, welcome you once again to today's meeting. Today's meeting is a uh, uh, thank you note from PSK to say Asanteni Sana for being our members. It is, we are hosting this in partnership with uh, Syntonomy. And uh, today we shall just be discussing about you and your money. Uh, we shall just be discussing about you and your money. And it's, uh, we're going to begin at 7.10, on or before 7.10, uh, the, or the closest we get to 200 members uh, joining us. I'm joined in by our Honorable Treasurer, Dr. Angelina Choka, who shall uh, come in and give us the opening remarks once we begin the meeting. I can see Dr. Lucorito from Bungoma, Karibu Sana Daktari, and also Dr. Jax, uh, Dr. Wilson Magetto uh, from Jax Pharmacy uh, in UTC. Thank you so very much, Daktari, uh, for joining our meeting tonight. We begin at 7.10 on or before uh, that if we get to 200 members who have joined us for today's meeting. Dr. Nad Aron, uh, speaking about uh, uh, the CPDs, that is being sorted, Dr. I have continuously told our members, it is being sorted. Yes, we shall sort you as a customer, Dr. Kari Busana. Dr. Tracy Karioki, welcome so very much from Meru County. So that we allow ourselves to have enough time for the uh, for our guest speaker for tonight, allow me to go ahead and uh, just set the agenda for today. Allow me to go ahead and set the agenda for today. Wonderful. Today is uh, the 6th of October, and we are, due, we are celebrating the World Customer Service Week. And from PSK, we are saying Asante. And our way to say Asante is to uh, ensure that we are able to share more and more knowledge together. Today, we shall be discussing you and your money being facilitated by none other than uh, Syntonomy. Uh, the conversation shall be on managing money, managing expenses during inflation, debt and investments, and 
and many more. A few rules, ground rules and announcements. First and foremost, thank you so very much for participating in this session. All participants are muted during the entire course uh, of this session. Please ask the questions via the Q&A tab at the bottom of your window. Questions shall be addressed by the presenters on the Q&A tab. This video is being recorded and shall be shared on the PSK YouTube page. I point to note that today, this is not a CPD meeting. We shall be, uh, we shall be able to uh, allow, uh, give you and share with you more meetings where we shall have the CPDs. The pending CPDs, we, shall, we are in the process of working on them and you shall be seeing them and receiving them in uh, the near future. So just uh, as I had promised before, either we get to 200 or 710 and I can see we almost get to uh, 200, 210 at the same time. So ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome none other than Dr. Angelina Choka. She is a specialist in matters supply chain. She also, uh, uh, we also have the honor of having as our honorable treasurer at the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Allow me to welcome Dr. Angelina Choka to uh, just give us and opening remarks. Dr. Karibu Sana. Asante Sana, Dr. Mbao. It is so amazing to see all of you guys here. We are excited, excited, excited for this evening. If you're like me, you want to know, eh, how do I handle the money? My money, how do, where does it go? For me, most of the time, I feel like it just disappears. So the intention of PSK today is to come and just talk to you about money. How do you manage it so that it stops disappearing? How do you make sure that you grow it? How do you get out of debt? You know, those phone calls you get where you're being asked, it's that day again, you know? So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Angeline. It is an honor, an honor to serve you as the national treasurer. And it's also my biggest joy from PSK to tell you happy customer service week. We hope that this message reaches you well and it reaches you nicely. Greetings from the National Executive Council, greetings from the president of PSK and the vice president. We are here for you. Over to you, Dr. Mbao. Asante so very much, Dr. Terry. Uh, I, can tell, I can tell truly this is an indeed uh, great meeting tonight because if the treasurer has joined us eh, and uh, the accounts office is joining us for a webinar, this is an indeed a great meeting for us to have today. So ladies and gentlemen, without further much ado, allow me, I will, I, will, I will give a chance to see you to give the closing remarks so that he gives the closing parting shots. Allow me now to welcome none other than the CEO, at Centonomy, allow me to welcome none other than the CEO at Centonomy, who is going to be the facilitator for today. Who is going to be the facilitator for today? His name is uh, Waidaka Gatumia. Some of us, probably myself, I happen to see him uh, on uh, on uh, mainstream media and listen to him so keenly, and also try sneaking into one of his webin uh, into one of his uh, various sessions. I do hope that he has a lot to, for us. And thank you so very much, Wano Waidaka. Karibu sana. I promised my members at 710, uh, all close to 200. We're now at 225 and at 711. Thank you, the stage is all yours, Bona Witaka Karibu Sama. Dr. Mbao, I appreciate uh, the kind words and the introduction you've given me. I want to confirm my time to end. What time would you like me to stop? Because I, ca I have a habit of speaking for long, for long periods of time. So I must be guided by the time. When would you like to stop? Uh, our meeting usually closes uh, at uh, 8.30, but our members are, are well privileged. I know they will, they are probably sitting somewhere uh, drinking coffee, eager to listen, activating their, uh, their, their brain receptors to listen. Eh? Okay. We can have it uh, on till probably 8.30. We can have the Q&A after 8.30. All right, no problem. So I am guided. I'm not sure that we'll get that far, but we'll, we'll try and engage as much as possible as we can through this session. I'm very glad to be here. First of all, um, I, I wanted to bring greetings from our organization's autonomy. If we have never met before, my name is Waidaka Gatumi and I serve as CEO and also as one of the lead trainers at uh, Centonomy Limited. And um, it is truly an honor and a pleasure to be here to share with you. Because we don't have a lot of time and time is money, as you can imagine. I want us to get straight into the content for the day. And we'll be engaging as we go. As, as If something comes to mind, if, if I... 
If I ask a couple of questions, we'll use the chat box, we'll use the Q&A section. So do feel free to participate even as we go through all of this so that we can um, engage properly throughout the time. So at Centromi, we are on a mission. Our mission is to shift mindsets so that purposeful people can create wealth and live abundantly. How do I know that you are a purposeful person? Because after a long day at work, you have taken time to sit down, hopefully with a pen and paper next to you, at least some electronic gadget that can gather your thoughts as you go through this. And you've taken your personal time to come and learn something new. I'm always humbled because when I come into a room like this where everybody is a doctor and I am not, and I'm working on it, I'm working on it. God willing, uh, I'll have a few more titles in front of my, my name. I am humbled because that means that you have a willingness and an openness to learn. And that is an amazing trait. Not everyone has it. I know you have lots more members than this who are in this room. And so the fact that you've come into this space with the openness and readiness to listen is awesome and you're already on the right track. And I applaud you for doing that. And so I recognize that you're purposeful. So when we now begin to describe this second half of the statement, which is so that you can create wealth and live abundantly, it's important to recognize that wealth and ab the abundant life are not the same thing. How do you know this? I know many of you treat people for depression who have more money than they know what to do with. So the fact that they have money cash flows that are coming to them does not always link to the purposeful, abundant life that we have. And so let, I, I love to start off the session like this because we begin to recognize that it's not about the money. Money is a very good thing and is very useful for the life that you want to live. However, it is not the source of happiness and the abundant life that we're looking for. So we need to think more broadly. We need to think more broadly about what actually matters to you. In fact, if you attend any of this autonomy classes, one of the first questions and most abundant questions that we will ask over the whole time is what do you want? Ladies and gentlemen, in fact, I'll ask you to write that question on the piece of paper that's in front of you or wherever you're taking down notes. And I do expect that you'll take notes. There will be an exam at the end of this session. But I know I'm speaking to doctors, so you've passed all the exams <laughs> that you need to pass. Kindly write down this question. What do I want? And it, yes, it, it sounds simplistic. It sounds, um, how would I put it? It sounds incomplete, but it's a very powerful statement or question. What do I want? Because what that begins to do is it challenges you as far as the outcome that you are looking to achieve. And let me just tell you this now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have a clear outcome that you're working towards, I assure you, then you will not get anywhere. In fact, can I put it in, in the words, um, my high school English teacher, I'm sure he, he stole it from somewhere else, but if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every single time. The reason that you're able to achieve whatever achievements you've gone through, whether it is academic, whether it's business, whether it's career-wise, is because there was something driving you. Even if it was not uh, <clears throat> completely abundant to you, uh, uh, abundant here, sorry, to you at that moment, there was something driving you, even if it was like for us older folks who remember this song when we were in school, you remember that song? And when, when we used to come home and TV used to start at 4 p.m., TV was not abundant the way it is now. It started at 4 p.m. and there was, a, there was a song that used to come. I can't remember the, 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 the program, but it was so many vijana, musiches and masomo, mwisho wa kusama, utapata kazi nzuri sana. Yes? So we were driven and it was, you can imagine hearing that song over and over again in your head. You're driven to know that I go to school to work hard so that I can get a good job. When I get a good job, then I'll make enough money. And there are those kind of things that are driving us. So do you see there were goals that were imprinted in us? But I recognize that each one of us has different goals that we may not have expressed. What are the things that you want? And, and secondly, some of those goals may not be precisely expressed. So that you're saying, for instance, I know many of us are thinking, how do I retire wealthy? Or how do I even get to wealth before I retire? But you have not even described what wealth is. Hmm. So that's where we're going to start. 
When I am describing this word wealth, I want you to type in the chat box as many of you as possible. When you heard the word wealth, I've been talking about it now for a couple of minutes. What images came to mind when you thought wealth? Type in the chat box as quickly as possible. What is wealth to you? I want to understand so that God willing, we have a, a meaningful discussion. What does wealth mean to you, the doctors in the room? Oh, Aziz is there with good health and happiness. I love that. Excellent. What else? What else does health mean? Uh, not health, wealth. What is wealth to you? What are, we, what are you looking for? To? When you hear wealth, what comes to mind? What images come to mind? I see there Dennis talking about assets. Angeline talking about independence. Um, Evangeline is saying, ooh, a lot of money and investments. Very good. Better investment, Joanne is talking about. Excellent. Abundance. Financial freedom. Power. Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a different one that I've had for, for not for a long time. Wealth, economic, as well as social well-being. I love it. So uh, we can stop there. Those who have not yet written, it's okay. We, we, have, we have accepted what you're saying. So if we came into this room, ladies and gentlemen, and I began to talk about wealth, and Joanne um, Wanyoto is, is thinking it's about a harmonious life, while Dr. Irene is saying it's generosity, while Aziz is talking about family, while Elizabeth is talking about traveling, while Pauline is talking about sufficiency, um, while uh, Bernard Kibet is talking about social well-being, we would have a very odd discussion. Because when I say one thing, it is not linked to the wealth that you have. Now, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, your opinions are 100% correct because they're yours. And I'm not taking them away. And that's why I asked you, what do you want? But for the sake of our discussion, I want us to come and bring our definition of wealth together. And I, I, I know if, 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 let me, if I can find, oh, thank you to everybody who's been responding. It's so useful when we have a discussion like this to have a response. I saw somebody talking about to have a lot of money. Good, how much? <laughs> At what point? Because I'm pretty sure right now, there are members of your family who consider you to be the wealthy one, isn't it? And there's an expectation upon your life simply because they believe that you're wealthy. But in your response, maybe you've written, I want to have more. So how much, how much becomes important? So let's start off with the definition. This is not that your definition is wrong or that I'm saying mine is right. I'm putting this definition out so that we can have a meaningful discussion. We can confine ourselves to this definition. I want you to think about it this way. That wealth is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want without having to work. Please do not misquote me and go and tell people that at St. Autonomy they say you don't have to work, excuse me. No, in fact, you'll have to work extremely hard to get to this point where you don't have have to work. But here's the thing, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, you will have to work extremely hard because the idea of this process lands on this issue of assets that we're about to discuss. So can we break this down a little bit more? I'm spending time here because guess what? You understand the numbers and you understand the, the, the basic principles of one plus one, the mathematics you get. And so I'm here to challenge the way that we think I told you our mission is to shift mindsets. So if we understand it differently, then it begins to change the way that we work. So first part of it, the ability to live the lifestyle that you want. So what kind of lifestyle would you want? What kind of lifestyle? Have you thought about it? Because many, many of us will say, I would like a nice house. Good, where is that house? And when do you want it? And how much does it cost? And if you're living in that nice house, does that mean that you're going to take public transport to that house? No, oh, so you want a nice car, okay, good. And then you'll be like a few of these other wonderful hope, uh, folks here, like Elizabeth who was saying she wants to travel as well. Yes, so how much have you put it down? Have you been clear, have you been concise? So let me show you what that looks like. And you can follow along with this exercise with me as well and do it for yourself because I want to be as practical as possible. I don't know how many of us have begun to think through this the way that we're thinking about. Good. So we say, let's be specific, not general. 
Don't say a house, say what it is. What is that house? It is a three bedroom and it is in, uh, in Machakos, yes? Yes, and it will cost me uh, Kenya shillings, what, 10? I don't know. Is that enough? Maybe 10 million would be a, a four bedroom. So we, should we aim a bit higher. Is it three or four bedroom? Maybe three bedroom. Let's leave it at that. Good, it's in Machokas and you know where it is. Do you see that this is a specific goal? Now, because you know the amount that you're going to spend on it, then you can be able to see what do I need in order to get it. But without the goal, you just want a nice house. How much is it? Is it in, in Kitsuru where you're, you're going to spend a million dollars to purchase just the land by itself? Or is it in Machakos where the land plus the house is 10, 10 million? Do you see the difference in specificity? That's what you're talking about. Good. Oh, oh so you're going to drive a car or there are two cars. Maybe two cars because you and your family you want to have at least two cars. Which ones are they? Yes, one is, uh, I don't know, in the chat box. I don't know how many people are dreaming like I am, but that's the point. We need to be specific. Okay, name it. Name it. Uh, what would it be called? A RAV4 maybe. RAV4 and... And what else? And then a, a normal saloon that you're going to have along the way, which would be what? Is it called a Silphi? It's called Silphi, I think. Nissan, Silphi. Good, no problem. So how much is that in total in terms of what you'd need to put into that? Rafa is what now? Just 3.5, something like that. Silphi would be another 800,000. So we're saying 5 million in, in car. Okay. Now here's something that you may not know, but your house, and your car hmm, are not assets in the same way that you would think about. Guess what? They are wonderful. They are assets. But I want you to write, next, write down next to them those things that you have written down. They are consumption assets. For consumption. These items, yes, both of them, your car and your house, guess what they do? They take money out of your pocket. Come on, ask your colleagues here in this room, in case you've never thought about it. For those of you who have never thought about it, those who own their own homes and live in them, they will tell you to live in your own home is not for free because you don't have a landlord. If the pipe has broken and it has burst, there's no landlord to call and say, hey, the pipe is broken and it has burst. Come and fix it for me. No, who is the landlord? Imagine it is you. And so the money comes out of your pocket. And if you're living in, in any area in which uh, the land is taxed, you pay uh, taxes to the government for spend, uh, spending time in that space. So even if you're living in your own home, it is not for free. So money actually comes out of your pocket because you're using it. It's for consumption. The car's the same. Uh, but aren't we aiming to have these things? So let's talk a little bit more about it. Good. Now I need your help. Somebody who's living in a 10, 10 million house, they have two cars worth about 5 million because you know that's how, they, that's how they're rolling at this point. What kind of monthly income were you imagining this person would have? What monthly income in the chat box would this person have? Quickly, 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 as quickly as possible. What were you imagining when you see this person, um, when you saw this discussion beginning? 400K, okay. Some people have, hey, ambitions, very good. It's good to have this. I like it. I like it. I'm going to take uh, Mika's, uh, uh, Mika's uh, position. I hope I pronounce it properly. M-I-C-A-K, Mika, or Mika as you pronounce it. Um, I'm going to take your position. Everyone else is dreaming big. Me, I'm, I'm dreaming with Mika. I'm on that other side. Let's say 200,000 income per month. Okay. Let's look at that. Good. No problem. So what does this mean now? Let's Let's look at what this means. And you can do the calculation with your number. Like Jamila, feel free to work the same mathematics I'm doing here with your 750. Okay, let's, let's look at that. Okay, so 200 monthly income. Okay. We said wealth is the ability to live the lifestyle that you want. Have we described the lifestyle? Now we're being specific. A house worth that value, a car worth that value. And a monthly income worth this value that will allow us to drive those cars, live in that house, travel, do the various things that we're talking about. All right. So we've described it. Do you see that we have described it in clarity? It is not general, not a nice house, not nice cars, specific, not as, as a nice amount of money per month, specific. Why? Because then we can plan. So let's plan now. So reset 
Wealth is ability to live the lifestyle that you want. We described it. Good. Next. The second half of that statement, I hope you realize, then I know it's controversial, but I want us to think through it without having to work. I didn't say that you're not going to work. You are all purposeful people. I believe God put us on this world, in this world to work and will work all our lives. But it's just that you don't want to have to work in order to eat. That, in my estimation, sounds like wealth. I don't know if it sounds like wealth to you, where you don't have to work, but because you're purposeful, you're going to work. Does it sound like wealth to you? So what does that mean? Then this dream that we have put here on the screen means that this income should be coming whether we work or not. So what does that mean? That we have assets. These assets are the ones that are putting this money in our pocket on a monthly basis. Um, I know you all have dreams and ambitions. Which assets were you imagining would take care of you and pay you when you don't have to work? In the chat box, very quick, which assets had you some dream and ambition about to think I want to own them because I know they will pay me to live that life. Which assets? Because I know you know them. Even as we're discussing, I, there we go. So Carol was thinking rental real estate. Let's talk. And I, as I can see, there are many of them. So we're going to use that as an example. So rental real estate. Rental real estate. Now, what many of us don't recognize and probably are not very aware of, and that's why financial education is important, and not just formal financial education. I'm talking about education about personal finance and growth. I think it's also important, ladies and gentlemen, please talk to, um, talk to investment experts. I don't know why we feel fearful to go into a stockbroker and talk to them about shares. We feel fearful to sit down with a real estate agent and talk about business. Do it. Yes, I want you to come and attend our classes. Yes, I do. But that's not the only place you can learn. Read about them. Watch documentaries about it. Find information that can help you grow. What you'd find out if you came into a Centonomy class is that our, our wonderful expert trainers who are not just Centonomy staff members, we go into industry. So for instance, um, when we're talking about real estate, the class is taught by a real estate agent and a land economist. So we're not, we're, it's not, we're not, to, we're not trying to take you to school. We're trying to show you what works in the market. So if you came into that class, our trainer called Lucy, amazing real estate agent and, and land economist, she'll tell you that on average in Kenya, real estate, rental real estate will earn you about 5% of the value per year. That's, what, that's the actual amount of money that you're going to get just in case you didn't know. So I hope those of you who took, wrote down different numbers than I did uh, on the screen, uh, please follow the mathematics with yours. I hope you're, you're going to follow along with me. So you, very quickly, first of all, if it's giving me, that's an annual rate, then I need to ch change my income to an annual amount. So it'd be that 200,000 times 12, which will give you what to check my maths because you know, sometimes you do head maths and it's, it's just going to give you. So annually, you're looking for 2.4 million, just in case you didn't know. You see, we're, we're being practical. We're not, we're not being general. We're being specific about what we're trying to achieve. So my assets should be able to pay me 2.4 million per year so that I have a monthly income of 200,000. Now, what assets, as far as real estate are concerned, are going to pay me that amount? So let's figure it out. If we said the assets pay you 5% per year and my annual needs are 2.4 million per year, then that's what it means. 5% should be equal to 2.4. 5% of what? The value of the property. Let me just put that there so people can be able to see. Of the value, okay, of the property that we're going into. So uh, I need to expand this so that we do the cross multiplication. You, now you, we with our children in, in school and we're doing cross multiplication. So what is the actual value of the property? That's the 100%. What is it? What is it equal to? Simple cross multiplication, let's do it. Isn't it 100% divided by 5% and we multiply by our annual amount needed. So if yours was 750, I know you've done the calculation for yourself. So let's go. So mine is 2.4 million. 
So if my dream is to retire and have rental properties, right? I need to have at least, and so that, and retirement doesn't mean age 60. I mean, at whatever point you stop having to work in order to eat. Now I have a number. Micah, we have the number, isn't it? So I would need properties, Micah, valued at 48 million shillings, okay? That will be, their value are the ones that are going to be paying me. And when I say that, the 5% is after you've paid your taxes and all the other things, what you actually get is about that 5%, okay? 48 million value is what is going to pay me 200,000 shillings per month. And I'm set, I have achieved my goal. Uh, who was it? I think Jamila was the one who had said 750. So let's do 750. Yes, times 12, 9 million. Okay, so for Jamila, because she's doing 750, then you need properties worth 180 million if you're going for rental real estate. Now, here's why it is important to get financial uh, knowledge like what you're doing at this point, because then you begin to realize, oh, but there are other income earning assets that are out there in the world that can help me that I don't have to earn only 5%. I could go into the bonds market. I could go into other areas. I can see people already talking about amazing places like money markets and other things like that. But which one is going to work for you and which one have you chosen that you're going to work on? I don't know how many of you are amazed or shocked by the amount and your pension will not be enough. We work with the Retirement Benefits Authority and they, and they just talk, they talk to you and begin to say, listen, most people pensions will cater for maybe, maybe, a maximum of 30% of their needs once they retire. Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Simple mathematics again. Can I tell you simple mathematics? Currently, most people are doing between 3 and 6% of their income today going towards their pension scheme. 3 to 6%, okay? If they're matched by the, the employer, it can go as high as 10%, okay? Let's say you are matched by your employer and it's at 10%. I don't know which investment is out there in the world that pension funds are going to go that suddenly will take 10% of your income, invest it so magically, and at the end of, at the end of your retirement, that 10% suddenly magically becomes 100% of your needs. It does not work. So I'm trying to explain. Your pension will not be enough. So you need to have investments and assets that you have built up over your work life that will then begin to take care of you. And as I said, the house, that house that you're so excited by that we've been taught that we need to own our own home will only cater for a small amount out of, those, uh, out of our monthly needs. And we spent a huge amount on it. So if, now I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'll come back to that point about the house later and then we can have a discussion. So now that I've set the stage, I've painted the picture. I want us to understand now why it is that we must take specific actions now that will help us along the journey. And it starts with awareness. If we are not aware, then we find ourselves in trouble, okay? Let me give you an example of what I mean by awareness. So how much of what you work so hard for is actually yours? We use this to illustrate because mo most of us have never actually thought through it in detail. What, what is actually mine? So imagine that this calendar on the screen is uh, a representation of your total income. Yeah, your total income from your job, from your side hustle, from any other sources of income that you get. This is 100% of your income, okay? Not just 100%. In fact, we're going to give you even more. So imagine that each month represents 10% of your income, okay? Imagine that it represents 10% of your income each month. So there are 12 months, that's 120%. Let's see where your money goes, okay? So you are good, most of us are good tax paying Kenyans. And so we pay 30% minimum tax. So 30% is income, right? But we also pay tax VAT, excise duty. We pay levies, fewer levies, and we pay so many different taxes. Most of us actually paying closer to 40, between 40 and 50% tax. But because you guys are better than all other people, let's go to 30. So 10, 20, 30%. Another way to think about it, ladies and gentlemen, is that you worked from January to March for the government. <laughs> After that, 
Where does your money go next? In the chat box, quickly. Where does your money go next? After you've paid the government, where? Where next does it go? Because that's what you don't even see. You just pay. So in the chat box, where does your money go after you've paid the government? Bills, rent, all those things. Good. Excellent. So for many of us, it's the landlord. On average, people are paying 20% of their income. Uh, if, if they're paying rent, it can go as high as 50% if they're paying a mortgage. I'll show you a mortgage later on. But here's the thing. So let's say 10, 20, that goes towards rent and where we're living. Oh, praise the Lord, Lydia. We have a few people who are people of faith who remember to pay their tithes and offering to the church. And even if you're not a Christian, you're not a believer, um, even if you're not a person of faith, because even other faiths, Muslims give a lot, especially during Ramadan and other places, even if we are charitable, we tend to give charitably outside of our family. On average, you'll see people are paying 10%. They give it charitably like that. Then we do household shopping. Now, this one can vary as high as 30% if you have many children like me, as low as 5% if you're the single man in the room. So let's let's find a, a happy average there of 20% of, of 20 goes towards all household shopping. So not just groceries, but any other spending that you have in the house. Then after that, uh, we have utilities, isn't it? Electricity, water service charge, garbage collection, um, all the expenses that come with this gadget that's next to you and Wi-Fi and your phone expenses. If you have a house help, and any other kind of staff members within, that's another expense. So I know when I added those ones, they're going to 20%, but let's do 10% as far as that is concerned. Then after that, we've got, for instance, transport costs. And we talk about transport, it's your vehicle. And if you're paying for the vehicle, you're paying for the loan. The loan is part of the cost that was there. So let's talk about transport and especially with the fuel prices that are there. Most of us are driving in this room. And if you're not driving, even then the fuel cost has just made your expenses that high on average 10%. 10%, if you're driving a car on loan, it can go as high as 25%. So let's go with 10%. And at this point, our money is finished. That is 100% of our cash. At this point, we have not paid school fees. What else have we not paid? Medical care. At this point, we have not paid. What else? Which other things have we not paid? We have not sent money to our parents for upkeep, Tabitha. We have not done that. At this point, when we have spent 100% of our money, we have not entertained ourselves. And so we try and do all those things. And because we did some of them, then suddenly we have, we, because we spent more than we have, we had to borrow to do so. And so we have to pay back our loans and we pay it back. Write this down. Pay yourself first. I told you, I, you know the principles. You know them. But until you actually see it, we're not going to make a change. And the problem that our education system has done for us is that it has taught us that if we get a good job and we get paid, we have achieved our goal. We have not achieved the goal yet. Get a good job, get a degree like the one that you have, and now you're set. You're not set. Because guess what? It does not matter your income level. The Let me tell you, there are those in this room who are earning 100,000. There are those in this room earning closer to a million shillings, and we all have the same problem. <laughs> we all have the same problem. I'm telling you, we've trained people at Centronomy earning over a million shillings a month and they have the same problem because we have a lack of awareness. And so we need to shift our priorities and we need to do what I've written here. So write it down, tip number one, pay yourself first. What does that mean when you say pay yourself first? Your first priority when money comes to you should be you. And how do you pay yourself? Write this down, you save and invest. <clears throat> you save and invest. And those are not the same thing. Saving and investing. In fact, let me just look through all the answers that you sent me. Did I see saving any more? No. I asked you, where does your money go? Nobody here said saving. Did anyone say saving? If, I, so if you said it, I didn't see it. I just look through the answers. You all told me about everything except saving. No one said investing. Do you see that it is not a priority? So we save and invest once we've paid everybody else. <laughs> A 
and usually there's nothing left. So we are kind of trying to build, it's not a priority. So we are shifting that priority. When you get your money, if you're a person of faith like me, you pay your taxes, you pay your tithe and offering, the next person you pay is you by saving and investing. Why? Because if you pay everybody else, there's nothing left. And you don't save because I know people at the next question that's going to come, the next question that's gonna come is what percentage should I save? Percentages are for children, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you train your five-year-old and, and 10-year-old at home so that they learn the principle. For us adults, we don't save and invest percentages. We save and invest towards a goal. Because when you have a goal, it's not about percentages. Did you see that we had a specific goal? Exactly, Angela, there's nothing left if you pay everybody else first. So what are we suggesting? Write this down so that you don't forget it, Angela. Pay yourself first, then you survive on the rest. You know how people talk about live within your means? That's what this means. If you're living within your means, you have paid your taxes, you've taken care of your faith, and then you have saved and invested, then you survive on the rest. And if you cannot survive on the rest, then could that mean that you're living beyond your means and cannot afford your life? Mm -hmm. So what must we do? And these are the challenges that we give in this autonomy class and hopefully it will gonna challenge you. So that means is your income enough? No, probably then. So you need to include a higher, how do I earn more? And with the money that I have, how do I manage it better? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you've ever, you've ever struggled with this question, why save and invest? What's the reason? And sometimes we have these images in our heads, but we've never actually thought through what it means. What it means. We save and invest for these things, that, that house you want, the education that the children are gonna have, our retirement fund. But we don't think what it means. We save and invest, yes, for these things, but we're actually saving and investing in order to do what? To spend, because that house will cost money. The education will cost money. My retirement will cost money. So the outcome is to spend, but this time the issue is to spend not on just general things, which we tend to do, but spending with purpose. You see, we have assigned a goal to the thing. And listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes, you know, we look at, at such talks and we think that we're just saying, oh, there's no more fun, there's no more spending. Purpose to go on holiday. Yes, people will say I'm budgeting for holiday, but you actually save up for it. Do you know how much it will cost you in the next four months when you're going on holiday? Have you actually booked the place? Do you know the cost? Do you know how much? So what happens is we get to the holiday, which we say is important to us, but we didn't plan for it. And then we go when we are stressed. That's what I used to do. I used to go on holiday stressed because I didn't know how much I was going to spend, I had not planned. And so it was like, felt it like a burden and I knew I was going to have to repay some credit cards after I went. So if travel is important to you, put it in your budget. You see, ladies and gentlemen, people often think of a budget as a restriction, like, you know, handcuffs. That's what we often think it is. But a budget is not for restriction. A budget is for control. And I can tell what is important to you by looking at your budget. If going out on the weekend with your friends, like it is for me is important, then it should be in your budget, going out money. If going on holiday is important to you, Elizabeth, then put it in your budget. But the problem is we don't want to budget for it because we don't, we don't want to take the time, the discipline to work through it so that we can go. <sighs> <laughs> and then we get caught up in this thing called the image yes we are all doctors in the room we're all doctors and a doctor should drive a certain car who said a doctor should have a house up country. Who said? So your image becomes a prison rather than a resource. 
when we're thinking about image versus uh, wealth creation, when you're concerned about image, you spend more as you earn more. You spend and save very little. So you saw our exercise earlier on, the instinct is to consume. You're working for a lifestyle. You have to work in order to eat. The lifestyle starts off extravagant. And then like Robert is telling us here in the chat box, suddenly because of all the debts that we have, the lifestyle reduces because suddenly I cannot continue to borrow at the same level because the income is not matching the borrowing. And so it reduces over time and we are careless about time and our spending is driven by OPO, other people's opinions. Somebody who's thinking about wealth creation has a different mindset and that's you, that's you right now. You right now are going to start thinking differently because you've been in this session. You're going to start thinking, how do I invest more as I earn more? Let that be the priority. Remember, save and invest when? First, by paying yourself first. Then you're thinking about multiplication and, and saving. That's the priority. I didn't say it's the only thing. I said it's the priority. So that anything else that you think is a priority comes is, is subject to that. The instinct is to increase. You're working to create what? Assets. And those assets are the ones that will then fund your lifestyle. The lifestyle, for those who generate wealth, you watch it is usually starts off modest and grows over time because they're disciplined. And you are disciplined. You cannot have achieved your educational level without some form of discipline. But now we have to apply that discipline to another area of life. And as I said, discipline does not mean the absence of fun. Because sometimes when come, people come into a session like this, that's what they think. Please, if a new phone is important to you every year, the new iPhone, whatever, 15 is coming out next year, put it in your budget because it matters to you. So what you're doing is you're saying, this is important to me, I'm going for it. That car that you want, the one that I put there on the screen is not because I don't like cars or I think that image is bad. It's just that make it a plan. The problem is we don't plan. And then we understand the value of time and our spending is driven by personal values and choices. The car I want, the phone I want, but I'm going to do it responsibly. I want to buy that car, but I also want to send my children to university, but I also want to do this. So I have to have a plan for all of them and I can't do it over there. OPO is other people's opinions. Micah, other people's opinions. So we're not saying don't enjoy your life, just enjoy it responsibly. I'm using cuss words in this same space. Tip number two, this one shifted my life and it will change yours. Track your spending. I know it sounds boring. I know it sounds tedious, but it will reveal things that you cannot believe. For us, my wife and I, when we did this for the first time, and do it for a month. A month is enough every so often do another month, but you don't have to do it every single, every single day for the rest of your life. But a month now, 30 days, figure it out. Then after a year, come back and do another 30 days because that's what we have been here. So, so let's watch this, ladies and gentlemen. This was my wife and I 10 years ago. We had just gotten married. So I was like, hey, we better get our financial lives together. This is what we discovered because we could not see. I told you awareness is the problem. And if you can get aware and start this, this will shift your life. We found we were spending more on takeout food than our rent. Okay. Crazy. I'm, I'm, you think I'm crazy? Wait until you track your expenses and see where your money is going. But you know what? the problem was we were spending about 250 bob on lunch at the office and we thought we were being frugal you know that sounds you know that's not an expensive restaurant lunch that's the one that the lady brings to the office and it's 200 bob and if you buy a, a soda or a drink with that you add 50 bob on top of it it's just 250 that's what it sounds like but you see it's 250 times two which means that's 500 shillings yes monday to friday yes you're talking about 2500 then on the weekend, now Saturday, you go to the nice place and spend how much in the chat box? How much were you thinking we are spending as a family in the chat box? Yeah, 3K. That's it, yeah. So now you're on the whole, that's how it was for us, about 3K, because you're adjusting for inflation. So that's 3K on Saturday. Then on Sunday, after church, another what? About 3K, yes? 
Good. So I'm not crazy. So you guys are proving to me that I'm not crazy. Good. Thank you so much. How much is that per week? That is 8,500 shillings. Per month, that is 34,000 shillings. We were paying rent of 28,000 shillings at that time. Ooh, and this 34,000 doesn't, doesn't include, we were still going to the supermarket and buying. <laughs> we were going to the supermarket and buying food and sometimes we'd cook and it would go bad in the fridge because we didn't eat it because we ate the one that we bought at the office. This doesn't include the nights that we would come home and look at each other and say, are you cooking? No, are you cooking? No, pizza. Oh, and my wife and I don't drink. Ooh, oh, wait, let me just stop right there. I move on before I get into even more trouble. Stop, share, stop, share. What tracking does is it simply reveals. And when we saw this, we now began to make other choices. Not that we don't eat out, it's just that we found a different choice that would allow us to eat out, but at the same time also save and invest. Watch this, we hired the chef to come cook for us at home. So eating out didn't matter anymore. We pay the guy 2,000 bob a week, he cooks up a storm, things that you've never seen in your life, but they're being cooked in your house. And when you do go out on the weekend with your friends, you have something to say, you know, this week our chef, Jaffer, was it was cheaper to hire a guy to cook for us than to eat out like this. Do you see that? Does that not sound like the abundant life? Because I'm sure you guys thought I was going to come and tell you, please stop eating out and cook for yourself. That's an option. You could have saved. We could have saved more by doing that. But does that sound like the... I told you, I'm going to get in trouble and I don't have time. I have to move on. If you didn't write that down and you don't do it, listen. I can only tell you because these are things that worked for me. Talk to Joanne, my colleague here in the room. Talk to myself. Ask us what those things have allowed us to do. Both of us are landlords now in that period of time because of those kind of small shifts that you're going to do. Those are the amounts that are going to pay down your loan much faster. Because here's the thing. When I come into a class like this, people are often wondering, Where's, I know the questions that are going to come. Which investment should I make? Those are simple questions. Find a good investment that's going to give you a good return that matches your goal. And these are, you know them all. If I told you to list the investments that are here, you know them all. Pick one and do that. But the problem is you don't have the discipline that we're going to actually do it for a consistent, uh, consistent amount of time. Like Einstein said, compound interest, the greatest mathematical discovery of all time. Why? Because 150 bob, which you spend on a cup of coffee, even now 250, I've seen cups of coffee for what? 350, 500 shilling? Take that cup of coffee on a daily basis and invest it in a sako, a simple sako, sako that is giving you 10% per year. You have not even looked for an investment. This is saving. That's over a million shillings. <laughs> this is saving we've not even gotten to invest oh, but I see can the young people in the room are just saying cup of coffee is too much uh, I'm sorry uh, 10 years is too long fine no problem let's talk about one year isn't that the holiday that you want that cup of coffee can take you debt free to watch the WRC next year in Naivasha and you book now so that you get a great place so that you're not camping out in the, in the bushes. Can you see that we're talking about living life? But now we're talking about living life purposefully. Not general, not haphazard, but focused. Focused on the things that matter to you. If we don't get this right, come on. If we don't get this right, we're just going to end up in our old age and we'll be asking our children for money to survive. That's not my dream. My dream, by God's grace, is that I'll leave them an inheritance, not steal from them. So let's live life. Come on.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I believe uh, uh, it's a very small commercial break. Let's uh, wait for Mualim to come back. I can see we are we are more in shock, okay? more so for the for those who spend on junk. Joan, uh, you can check on uh, uh, Mr. Waidaka, see how soon he's coming back. Okay, let me do that. I think he just got logged out, uh, maybe because of Wi-Fi, but I'm sure yes. he's getting back. Sure, sure. My good friends are here with me today. They have just bought pizza in the evening and probably a, a bottle <laughs> of beer. So we are we are learning it. <laughs> Fantastic. He'll be back shortly. Let me call him. In the meantime, our esteemed members, uh, our CEO is here with us. We shall be speaking about this at the end of the, uh, the at the end of the at the end of this uh, great webinar. I can see Dr. Uh, Dr. Karenya is uh, throwing an emoji there. Eh? Labda anashanga sasa what he has happened to in a twingy and Danny Kabisa. So kindly put on your questions, your the deep questions that you have. Eh? The deep questions that you have, kindly write them down on the Q and A session. Uh, so that you are able to see that uh, we are able to see <laughs> we are able to see uh, the questions. Nick Kadiri says that looks like his uh, Wi-Fi did not track his Wi-Fi spending. Yeah? <laughs> okay, I, I we must agree and thank you so very much for PSK National Executive Co uh, Committee. That is uh, Dr. Lucas Nebero, the CEO. Dr. Angelina Choka, Dr. Louis Manchogu, Asanteni Sana for providing us this wonderful gift for the World Customer Service Week. Dr. Robera Kenyanya says that this will be part of the internship induction. Asante Dr. it is well noted and well, is going to be well actioned henceforth. And I believe all of you here probably by a vote, uh, probably putting a thumbs up on your chat box, we can say that we can continue with these, we can have them as a quarterly. You eh? know, nikama our coach. Quarterly, yeah? quarterly of these financial uh, lessons. Eh? Just put, put a thumb on the chat box. Tunafinya eh? ile quarterly of this. Ah, Elizabeth, Dr. Elizabeth says, wonderful. Wonderful. I can see all of us. Uh, we need more of these classes. Eh? Joan, how, how far is Mualimu uh, uh, for today, our financial doctor? He is back. He's not far. He's here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to shift network. Mualimu, there is a, there is a, there is a comment that was uh, one of yes. the students noted. Yes. One we of would like to tell on that, him. Uh, <laughs> let's let's not tell on your students. <laughs> let's tell on them. One student said that you were uh, selling we... on bundles. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, did we lose him again? No, I don't think so. Okay, Malim, we, I think we have lost him again. Eh? No, no, no. He still seems to be there. What Just did they say? Him. That what? What did I do? Please tell me. <laughs> that you were saving on bundles. That is why you keep disappearing. So when we like a probably for a seamless I internet connectivity. Have I been disappearing before? I thought this was the first time. <laughs> that, was the fir that was the first time. You can probably switch off the video. Right now, probably they don't even yeah. want to see the teacher because the teacher is so truthful. Eh? It's the teacher who comes in with a 0 2 over 40 marks in a cut. Eh? Switch off the video. It's going to be more seamless. All right, no problem. Let's see how that goes. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, take it over, take it over, Malim. So 
ladies and gentlemen, I was talking about this as a specific example so we understand. I mentioned that your house takes money out of your pocket if you live in it. So let's, let's give this an, as an example, right? So this house on the right-hand side, what, how much does it look like it's worth? Yeah? So 40 million, Dr. thank you so much. So 40 million on this side. If you own it and live in it, it takes money out of your pocket, okay? You have to maintain it, you have to pay tax on it, it takes money out of your pocket. If I took that same 40 million, Dr. Ari, and I, and I invested in a property like the one across, as you can see on the other side, a rental real estate that was there. I put money into it. That 40 million, let's say I bought four apartments, each worth 10 million shillings, each one of them is giving me a return of maybe about 60,000, I think, for 10 million, about 60,000 sounds correct. So 60,000 times four, that'll give me what? 240,000 shillings per month cash flow into my pocket, ladies and gentlemen. Same, in, same amount of money in a different investment. And so in this case, I'm trying to argue that your priority would be the asset first before the faucet. However, I did say, remember we said this at the very beginning of the class, that the dream is to own both. Have a faucet, the house that you're living in, that will allow you to live the way that you want, and then the asset that is paying you to live in it. And so what we're trying to argue in this session is that we focus on assets. Assets do three things. They put money in your pocket, they earn, you, uh, but they earn you some income. They also protect your investment. Like a savings account is a good asset. Why? Because at least the money is there. And the last one is they gain in value over time, capital gains. So you want to focus on these rather than the other ones that make you look like you're wealthy. Let me give you an example of that if you don't mind. And if you have any connection issues, just type in the chat box or just let me know as we go forward on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I want to show you now what it means when we think about assets versus faucets. Let me, let me explain this to you. So with 1.5 million shillings, yes, uh, I don't think any of us get preferential, preferential treatments, yes? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely, Ruben, it depends on the location of the rentals. Like everything else, they, everything depends. It the general principle that you would put your money where there is a financial return is the priority as you build toward wealth. Because even if, for instance, and there, Principle is what I want to get, but Ruben, you're hundred percent right. I get what you're saying. It Hey, wait, Aka, are you still there? I think we have lost you again. Oh, Mr. Mbao, is it my end or is it Waitaka's end? It's Waitaka's end. Eh? Okay, yeah, yeah. We seem to have lost him again. Oh. Yes. Let me let me request him to just try and probably hotspot. It looks like the the Wi-Fi connection on his end is is uh is troubling him.
esteemed members of the society, uh, kindly bear with us. It's uh, that's a technological issue. We hope we we'll, we'll shall be soon back uh, so that we are able to continue with the lesson. Allow me not to continue with apologies. I will apologize afterwards because of time. Let's get to it. I was saying, if you can hear me now, just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Ah, yes, I can see those good questions that are coming in the chat box. Good, I can see the thumbs up. Ah, excellent. So we can hear and see each other. Well, at least we can do. So let's get to the apologies afterwards. I want us to get the principle. Have a look at the screen here. 1.5 million, I borrowed at 15% for five years, okay? What kind of car? Actually, hey, the cars now have changed. Ooh, with the dollar and everything, we are now close to 1.7 million. Which car am I getting for 1.7 million? What car would I get for that? As quickly as possible in the chat box. Which car? 1.7 million, I borrowed the high rates <laughs> yeah 1.5 would be um so an uh, yes so an auris total auris that's right uh possibly a fielder yeah that kind of car good so i have it volkswagen possibly yeah but uh, one of the lower models eh? the golf or high-end polo okay good so we're there good so watch this watch this watch this 1.7 million 15 percent for five years these are the numbers that we often don't think about. That means 40,000 shillings per month for 60 months. But here's a number that is even more interesting. You will pay 726,000 shillings in interest alone. That's how much the interest is on this. Are we together? So how much did you actually pay for this car? You didn't pay 1.7 million for this car, did you? You paid 2.4 million. 2.4 million for this car. After five years, now you own the car yourself. After five years, now you own the vehicle yourself. How much is it worth then at that point? After five years, now you have owned the car. How much is the car worth? Five years later, you've been using it. Because we have to think about debt differently and we have to think through it. Is it an asset or not? So that car would be significantly less than the 1.7 million, which is what we're talking about. Are we together? So have a look at this. Can we think about this slightly differently? Let's think about it differently. This 1.7 million, if we borrowed, since we can afford to pay 40,000 shillings per month, what if we borrowed this 1.7 million and bought three different types of cars, okay? Yeah, 1 million in have accident free. We've got three, three cars. The small ones, you know, these small ones. I know many of you have used an Uber Chap Chap. You got in the car, it drove you there. Imagine it works. It's a vehicle. It does. It does work. Mm. Uh, no, this one, people have to see my face. It works. Ladies and gentlemen, they work. In case you didn't know, since you drive in them, they work. So we bought three of them. Let's think about it mathematically. One of them for, to drive you around the city. So you need a car to get around. No problem, whichever town you're in. The other two put them on the road as a taxi. Each one of them can potentially earn you about 1,000 bob a day. That's your profit. Two of them, that's 2,000 bob a day. Monday to, uh, Monday to Saturday, that's six times two. That's 12,000 per week. Then we're talking about, um, uh, that's per month, about 48,000 shillings. How much was your... Loan repayment on this, 40,000? Those two cars could pay the loan and put money in your pocket. Enough money for you because I can hear all the people saying I can't drive up country in an Uber, first of, in a, in a chap chap. First of all, you can, I've seen them on the road, they work. But if that's the biggest issue, you don't want to show up up country in your Uber chap chap, no problem. If image is your issue, they can put enough money for you to save up and, and hire a land cruiser for you to go when you're going on holiday that one time. But if we don't think about it, we find ourselves in a position where we're not actually achieving the goals that we want because we started off by looking for the flaw set before we got the asset. Hmm. 
it becomes even more interesting when we talk about a mortgage. Remember, we we're talking about that 10 million house. What if you took a mortgage to get that 10 million house? You'd get the mortgage at a better rate of 12% over 20 years, let's say 20 years. Let's think about this for a moment. So over 20 years, for a 10 million house where you would have been paying 60,000 in rent, now you're paying 110,000 in mortgage for 240 months. Look at the interest alone. So the interest on this would be what? 16 million over those 20 years for a house that when you bought it was worth 10 million. Now, obviously it'll appreciate in price over time, but the total amount that you're going to spend on this house on the mortgage is 10 plus 16, that's 26 million on this house. Now, the question is with that difference between what you're paying for the mortgage and possibly renting, could you have done something differently? This is the question that we are asking. I'm asking you, have we become purposeful with the way that we are going to do this? Are we thinking it through? Are we actually having a strategy or are we just living life? So I'm trying to chart together a strategy and it starts off by managing what you have. Now, if we are going to build to the point that we want to build to, and that's the aim of what we're going to do today, then we have to adjust our strategy and begin to say, guess what? The strategy is to achieve a specific goal. The specific goal is going to be, uh, sorry, I need to get this thing off my screen. Specific goal is to achieve the assets that will take care of us. And how does that work? It works by saying what, first of all, is our goal, our vision, that dream, the ambition that we put. Have we put it down on paper? We turn that vision into a goal and say it is specific, the amount. A goal has a cost and it has a timeline. In 20 years, I need to have the value of 48 million, remember the beginning of our discussion, or 100 million shillings. In 20 years, because I'm 40 right now, I'm 41 actually, so I have, I have 19 years now to get there. So in 20, when I'm 60, I want to have this value so I can be financially free. And if I don't want to wait those 15, the 19 years, how do I accelerate the journey? So we set the goal and then take specific actions towards them. Write this down so that you don't forget it because this is advice that is going to help you along the way. Write this down, ladies and gentlemen. The, when it comes to investments, because I know those are the questions that are coming up. We have 15 minutes, so I'm gonna give the time for questions now to come up. I know people are going to tell me which is the best investment. I told you the best investment is the one that matches your goal. So right now, for most of us as employees, what are we trying to do? We're trying to build up our wealth. We're trying to build it up so that it increases significantly to the level that we're talking about here. So I'm not going to start buying real estate as a practical direction immediately. Because first of all, I don't even have the capital to do so I don't have. So what do I do? I start saving and investing in investments that I can take my money, okay? And then I can afford at this time. But I'm looking for investments and savings that are going to multiply and compound at the rate at which I want them to compound. So, because the 48 million or 100 million is a huge sum that's going to come up, I have to take advantage of the compounding effect of investments. Now, I know that there are Muslims in this room and, I, and when they hear compound interest, interest becomes problematic. There are investments that are not haram for you as well. Let me give you an example, like real estate. Real estate, for example, has a compounding effect, but not rentals. So let me explain. If I purchase land, half a million shillings, it increases by 10%. End of this year, it's worth uh, uh, 550, is that 10%? Yes, 50,000, yeah. 550,000 uh, at the end of this year. Next year, it will appreciate from 550,000. So real estate has a compounding effect. But many times we purchased land, not with that in mind. We didn't know how much it was worth. We don't know how much it will be worth in how many years. We don't have a strategy. We are speculating. Ladies and gentlemen, speculation is not an investment strategy. Can I show you? I, I'm yet to fail in this. Whichever class I've ever take, taken, I'm yet to fail in this. There is someone in this room, in this class of ours here, who purchased a piece of land they have never even seen. Raise your hand. <laughs> Come on. You purchased land, you have not even seen it. <laughs> there the hands go. 
So what is it doing for you? Apparently it's appreciating, at what rate? When do you intend to sell it? So do you see that even our investment is not strategic? Let me tell you the strategy for people who are serious about investments. Before they bought that piece of land, before they bought it, they figured out today it's worth 500,000. But because this guy who's selling it is under pressure, he needs money quickly, I'll get it for 470. So I've even got it for a better price. At the end of this year, because of the rate of increase of land in this area, that property will be worth 510,000. If I sell it, I'll have made 40,000 shillings in one year. Or what your SACOs do, if you're a member of a SACO, or these companies that are selling you plots on the on radio, and do you know why they're selling you? Because look at this, they don't go and buy 50 by 50. They go and buy 10 acres at a good price. Then all they do, subdivide it, get the title deeds, and they sell it to you at between 30 and 60% more than what the value was. Those companies and your circles are making 30 to 60% on their transaction. Your investment strategy is, needs to be a strategy not hopefulness. Definitely meet hopefulness and faith with your strategy. It's important to have hopefulness and faith in a strategy, but strategy with hope and faith, not hope and faith without strategy. It starts off by managing what you have. It starts off by setting specific goals. And then it starts, and the next part when it comes to investment is to pick an investment that is going to give you a rate of return. Write this down that will beat inflation. That's why your savings account, if your savings account is giving you 5% and inflation in the country is 8%, do you understand that you're losing value? Now, I didn't say the savings account is bad. I'm just saying saving is not the way that you're going to multiply. So look for investments that will give you a higher rate of return. 15% plus, such as in the, in the chat box. Come on, which investments will give you 15% plus? I can see somebody, yeah, they can if you buy, but not, listen to what I'm saying. It is not buying and holding forever. You have a strategy to be able to get out of there. No, money market funds will not give you that. No, the money market funds, you're talking about eight, 9%, that's as far as they go. Money market funds are like savings accounts. Don't look at them as your growth. They are for saving. And remember we said you do both save and invest. Treasury bonds will give you that rate of return. But Judy, can I inform you of something that you may not know, Judy? Treasury bonds and government bonds are not compounding investments. They don't compound. Treasury bills and bonds, you earn interest on the original amount that you put in, simple interest. So if you hear of a treasury bond that is giving you 13% and that's about how, how high they are. So first of all, they're not going to give you 15% plus, okay? They're gonna give you about 12, 12 to 13% if, you, if you're in a good space, but they are also not compounding. Dr. Lucas, the stock exchange, anything related to business, Anthony, these are the areas, even Shylocking, John, Gethen, <laughs> even Shylocking, because it's related to business, will kind of give you that kind of rate of return. We talk about Forex, Forex is complicated unless you are going to dedicate your life to understanding the market. I wouldn't suggest, please, it's, it's complicated. You have to take time. So think through an investment like that before you go. So I want you to begin to think anything that is near business, whether it is buying businesses on the share market, whether it's going to an equity fund, not a money market fund, but an equity fund, which is investing in the stock exchange and other areas like that. These are the main areas where you're going to see high growth. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Where there's high growth, there's also higher risk. It comes with a package. It does. But without taking that risk, you cannot achieve that growth. So you have to take the risk, but take a calculated risk. 
And the best way to take a calculated risk, ladies and gentlemen, is to get the education that's going to get you there. Listen, it's time to pick up a book and learn. Look, there are many books that are out there in the world. Pick, pick up a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, pick a book, uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, pick a book, um, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. These are wonderful books. Or you can pick a wonderful local book like Making Sense by our founder, Washek Ndwati, which outlays many of these principles from a Kenyan perspective. But I'm trying to explain to you, wonderful ladies and gentlemen, do you understand that I'm trying to pack in all the information that I, I, I can into one and a half hours, but it's not enough. Your next investment is in education to learn more. Don't just pick the book, come and attend the class. We're starting our next class for Centronomy 101. It starts in February of next year. Make that investment now so that you come and learn these principles. How do I manage my money? How do I do those calculations so that I'm able to see, hey, aren't we talking about inflation at this point? Can I show you what inflation looks like just so that we understand real quick? And I know I have two more minutes. I'm going to be done in two minutes. Please understand this, ladies and gentlemen. 1992, bread was how much? Bread was seven shillings. 2022, 30 years later, that same bread, oh, oh, this one was how much? 500 grams, yes, 500 grams. Today we're buying 400 grams and we're paying 60 shillings for it. This was seven. seven shillings, 60 for a smaller loaf of bread. 20 years from now, 2042, how much do you think? We don't know what the size will be, but how much do you think that loaf of bread will be? Let's see what your guesses are so that I can give you some advice quickly. What do you think the guess, what do you, how much do you think a loaf of bread would be? Not even close, Patricia, not even close. Martha, not even close. Christine is getting there. So definitely about 250. If inflation hits 10% and maintains over that period of time, it can be over 400 shillings for a price for a loaf of bread, David. So things will continue to get more expensive and therefore our investment strategy must be to invest in investments that are going to give us a higher rate of return than inflation. And it's not, listen to me, this, again, the strategy is not just buy and hold. It is to continuously buy. It is the consistency that is more important. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for you to invest in yourself and actually take a, a course that will help you to put together a five-year financial plan like we do in the Centronomy 101 program. And then the investment classes are taught by industry experts, stock brokers. We talk to fund managers. We talk to real estate agents. And then we talk about how to protect your money in tax, estate planning. We talk about insurance. So it is a holistic view. It is not just one area. And you, I'm not just going to talk about your pension and your retirement. I'm also going to talk about your children's education. I'm going to talk about your current life. How do you enjoy life right now? Living abundantly as module four that's there on the screen. And this investment is worth your time and your money. It's only uh, for registration. You can only register today with 500 bob. And then you begin to prepare yourself for the payments that will come up. You can do them in installments coming up in February next year. This is the time to make that investment because it's gonna shift your life. Take advantage of this uh, discounted registration. We always do this before the class begins so that we can get as many people involved as possible. So you can take a quick screenshot of this so that you know how to make the registration and then we'll reach out to you as well and, and begin to help you with that. For those of you who are interested in, in business, maybe you're running your own pharmacy and you've been wondering, where is my money in my business? I mean, I thought business was supposed to grow and yeah, that's because the skill set of running a business is very different than the skill set of managing your money. And we have a course for that called the Autonomy Entrepreneur. And that starts also in February and it will help you to build a business that is going to look at this this way. Look at the franchise chain like Good Life that has come into the market. That is not just a pharmacy. It is a business. 
that is beginning to see the shifts that are going on there. Isn't that the goal of what we'd like to achieve? This also starts, as I said, in February, and you can make a discounted payment now of only a thousand bob. Um, the difference here, sorry, for those who wanted the personal finance, when you pay through M-Pesa, take a quick screenshot, your first name and then the, the numbers 101 to follow so we know which program you want to get. And if you are interested as an entrepreneur, please put your name, the thousand bob is what you pay, take a quick screenshot, and then after your name put ENT so that we know that you want the entrepreneurship program, okay? Invest in yourself now. I hope it's been helpful. I will hand back to Dr. Mbao, who will guide me as to whether we take questions or how you'd like to move. I stole more of your time than you gave me. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. Now I can apologize for the internet interruptions. Even the backup network was slow to kick in, but I hope we're good. Asante, Asante Sana, so thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Uh, Bona uh, Mwalimu Waitaka. That was a great uh, lesson to learn. First, I want to appreciate our senior members who have joined us this wonderful evening. I can see some, a, a great researcher, uh, Dr. Mwangi Mogo. I can see a honorable fellow, uh, Professor Jennifer Ora, uh, Dr. Rabera Kenyanya, uh, senior respected member, uh, Dr. Arti Kamau. I can also see none other than Dr. Lucy Njogu, uh, a, a lead trainer. I can see PSK, the first PSK CEO, Dr. Nadia Bhatt. Asante Nisana for uh, joining us this wonderful evening. Also the chair, uh, Dr. Muduri Kome, uh, the chair of PSK Meru branch. So we start with Dr. Muduri Kome's uh, Bona Chair's uh, presentation uh, question, which investments have the highest returns? I do believe, Bona Yudaka, that have you been able to respond to that adequately? Or have you been able to, have you just been able to give a, an, an, a tip of the iceberg? Yeah, anything that is related to business will generally have a higher rate of return because the business is built around the key of generating value. So business directly, business indirectly, this is what we're talking about here. Wonderful, wonderful. From one great uh, presenter, but she's not scientific. I see in money, she's a, she's a true student. Dr. Anne Masiwanjiko asks, how do you increase Cash flow, second, ways of raising capital, especially when savings are inadequate. Okay, so the principle is this, is you're more valuable, you'll increase your income. For instance, if you're an employee, I don't know how many of you have had a house help working for you who you really love because of the work they're doing. The moment they start talking about, I want to live and go up country, you will have a quick discussion with them about how you can increase pay and things like that, right? But those ones who you're not too excited about their work and what they're doing, isn't it? If the moment they talk about it and they say they want to leave, there you are saying, praise the Lord, let's find somebody else. So increase your value. Now, when it comes to increasing cash flow in a business, that's slightly different. Now you're talking about marketing affairs. You're talking about the, the introduction of, of uh, initiatives that are going to cause customers to pay more, like changing pricing and various efforts. So as I said, the skill set is slightly different. And so the context would be necessary for us to answer that question holistically. But hopefully that's helpful. Asante Sana, uh, how do we account for events beyond our control, such as pandemics and other natural disasters? Prayer and fasting, I think, is the first thing that we need to do is a good thing to do. However, financially, Naomi, financially, at St. we encourage you as an individual to begin to put together what we call an emergency fund. An emergency fund is where you have built up sufficient savings in cash form, savings in cash form, that Just can cater for your lifestyle for up to six, six months or so, okay? Six months to 12 months. It will take time to build to that. It's not something that you're going to do in one year. So in our strategy, which we take you through in the St. 101 program, it takes about three to five years to put together a big enough emergency fund. And that will allow you to be able to weather some of these storms that come our way and any other kind of emergency that comes along the way. So we advocate for an emergency fund. And the second thing that we advocate for is income earning assets so that you have assets that are actually going to put money in your pocket. So you see, there's a difference between a piece of land which is appreciating in value, but doesn't put money in your pocket until you sell it as well as 
Um, there's also um, uh, and a piece of, uh, let's say, a rental property. Maybe it's smaller, but at least there's a cash flow that it's generating. So income earning assets, as well as an emergency fund, Dr. Naomi. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Oidaka. So probably also, as I go on recognizing our senior members who have joined us today, allow me to recognize Dr. Clary Sambala, who are, I'm ref, and also Dr. Karenye David, uh, who has mentioned that you can also, a good a business with a good investment return is organ harvesting. Uh, he is in regulatory, he is in regulatory, pharma regulatory, so he would be best based and how best he goes about that. Also allow me to recognize uh, the hospital pharmacist, Mama Lucy Hospital, that is Dr. Evangeli Minor, uh, Dr. James Sirongo, one of the greatest uh, African stories of entrepreneurship, and also Dr. Joan Wanyoto. Allow me now to go, as we conclude on our questions, first and foremost, do you have online classes? Uh, that is the other question. On that, yes, there's a question that is being... Online. Yes, there's another question that is being asked by none other than Dr. Clinton on Sembe. He, his evening has just consumed. I, could, I can see his WhatsApp status. He's, he's just left Peter in. So I think he feels he doesn't need the online classes. When are you going back to the physical classes? Uh, when there is demand. We are in business as well, and the demand for physical classes has significantly dropped. Um, we'll be continuing to test and see as, as they grow over time. But as, as of now, they're not profitable. We had very small demand, 10% of people. And even those who said they want to come for physical classes, when they are busy, they want an online version. So all our classes are currently online, they're virtual. And so, and you have multiple options. If I didn't mention that, we run the class on multiple days of the week and it's the same class that runs in one week. So if you miss the Tuesday class, you can come in on Thursday. If you miss Thursday, you can come in on Saturday. So there's flexibility for a busy schedule. Asante Sana. So I have a question from uh, one of our PSK's uh, professional body, and we have uh, engaged in matters of advocacy. And then one of the, one of the greatest level of advocacy in this country is joining the political field. We have one of our greatest politicians, Dr. Oscar Shamala. He's asking, how many bank accounts should an average person have? At least two, but likely three or four, okay? At least two. Why? Risk is an issue. So don't have bank accounts, all your bank accounts in one bank, because even banks fail. So have at least in two banks, have a, a current account for your transactions, having, have a savings account to put savings across, and then you can have more than one savings account. So in our classes, we teach about irregular expenses. You know, things that don't come every single month, like school fees, like cooking gas, like um, a club memberships, uh, your professional fees that you need to pay. Those are irregular expenses. And so we talk about a way of getting peace of mind, having a separate account to put money there and make them regular. That's why it can go up to about four accounts and then an investment account that is there. So minimum two, three or four is probably the best place to have that time. Wonderful, wonderful. There's a question uh, from one of our great pharmacists. She's asking, can one exhaust their savings on an investment? When I'm going out to invest, do I, can, is it okay that I go full throttle? Do I press on the fuel, on the, on the, on the diesel, on the, on the acceleration pedal, full throttle, empty my bank accounts and full invest, where they say, they popularly say, Kufa Dereva, Kufa Makanga. It's not wisdom to do so, because the next month, that in, the thing about investments is there are no guarantees. Eh? And anyone who comes to you and tells you a guaranteed investment, they have lied to you. There are no guarantees. However, there is no other way than through investment to grow your wealth. And so we must do it, whether there's a guarantee or not. But the issue with putting all your eggs in one basket, essentially, is that should the investment take more time than you thought, then for that period of time, you're under pressure and you have to get into debt and that could eat into your investment. And so, no, I would not advise that. As adults, because we are all adults in the room, we are here to, we must multitask. I mentioned we save and invest at the same time and pay our debts at the same time. And how do we do this? By managing our money. But the issue that we have, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I started there, is we are not managing our money. I can prove it to you. The first exercise you're going to do after this, immediately, in fact, you can even start doing it right now. I want you all to go through your M-Pesa messages. Where did I put my phone? Oh, it's the one that is giving me network now somewhere. 
Um, go through your M-Pesa messages and add up the transaction fees per month. It will shock you. I'm not saying M-Pesa is a bad service. It's an excellent service, but we misuse it. M-Pesa can save us money or it can take money out of our pocket. Beautiful service. All the mobile transfer, it's not just M-Pesa, Airtel money, all of them, but M-Pesa is the one that we mainly use. But if we abuse it, then we can find ourselves in trouble. <laughs> Let me tell you this. That idea of putting all your eggs in one basket, even for us that we were doing a building project, we, had, we got into a project off plan and they promised us the project will be complete in three years. Now, if we had put all our money there, we would have been shocked in year three because it took another about 13, 14 months after the promised time for this. So for 13 to 14 months, we would have been like this if we put all our money there. So my simple answer is no. I hope you have understood why. Asante so very much, Bonawi I will call. I will call you once again to just give the closing remarks. Uh, as I now welcome the CEO. Allow me to also recognize other senior members who are joining us tonight. I recognize the presence of uh, Dr. Kennedy Rombo, clinical pharmacist, Karatina Hospital. Allow me to recognize the presence of uh, Dr. Michael Warom, uh, seasonal entrepreneur. I also recognize the presence of Dr. Mika Anyona a great uh, pharmacist in matters research and uh, uh, policy development, and also recognize the presence of a member of the National Executive Committee and a scholar and a dean at the Dean School of Pharmacy, uh, Mount Kenya University, Dr. Uh, Michael Mungoma. Ladies and gentlemen, without uh, further much ado, let me al allow me this chance uh, to welcome the CEO, uh, PSK. You see, he's even, he's even running, a sieve, a just sieve to pick up the baton uh, to speak. Dr. Lucas Nebero, welcome. This is your chance now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mbao, and thank you, Malimo uh, Waidaka. That was really cool. I think I have been in many of these sessions, and I have not seen such interactions. It was really good, and this is this a value for membership. This is what we are trying to do for the PSK members. How do we move on? How do we, you know, grow? It's not just about the pills. Uh, we are more than just drug dealers. We are here to build ourselves as human beings, as professionals, and as leaders in the, in the various places we are. So um, what can I say? My take home message, I have been writing notes, everyone. I uh, wrote a lot of notes too. And I think my, my, one of my best messages, I think is, um, is pay yourself first. I've heard this so many times, I don't do it, but I hope I'll start track your expenses. And then there's something that you say about um, paying yourself first. And paying yourself first, you also suggested that also learning, spending time to build yourself, work on yourself. Um, we are professionals and working on ourselves includes not just financially, personally, um, professionally as in as a pharmacist, what is it that you need to do? What do you need that you need to grow in? And financially, how do you make sure when you grow up, you are, uh, when you get, yes, you grow up to a point where you can't uh, go to work every day, you're able to support yourself and your spouse. So I do thank you all for being here today. And yes, there's been suggestions about having this as a class, as an induction class, as uh, these are very good suggestions and we will take them in under advisement and we will advise as uh, we make, as we make, uh, further uh, arrangements. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Mwalimu Waidaka. Thank you for everybody else. And for the classes that are going to be coming next year, um, let's talk and see how we can give a special rate or some kind of um, throw a bone to some of the pharmacists so that they can throw you a pill. You know? So did you see that, how I say that? <laughs> so um, <laughs> Dr. Mbawa, take it over and thank you again. This is one of those areas that we should actually teach our kids. I mean, my wife and I were talking about giving our kids uh, checkbooks and start balancing, understanding how to balance a checkbook early before it gets to when they have to earn money. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate, thank you. It's such a privilege to serve you all. And uh, thank you for coming in. CEO. Uh, so Bonoidaka, the reason why I allowed the CEO to go first and uh, and uh, probably uh, allow you to give your uh, closing remarks last eh, is because of the last 
last request has made, you see it's a demand from our members. They do want to join that. How best are you going to facilitate? I know this is a conversation you can go on with Joanne, but speaker word to Kufura is Sabia Ule, Madam PS Joanna Hakikisha Kumba, pharmacist Omepata, Omepata ili discount, Missouri. Give us a good refund. Joanne, wapati a discount. Wapati a discount. Mimi hata nisha wapa. Mimi already gave you comments on the chat box. I already gave you that and I will continue to give more. There's the, there's the quick discount of 500 that anyone can grab today. But then even after that, um, I believe um, Mr. Mbao, we will be able to communicate and give definitely give a discount. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet you, team. Appreciated, highly appreciated. Excellent, excellent. Listen, One ladies, thing I forgot gentlemen. to mention, sorry. One thing I forgot okay. to mention is that this is customer service and, and, and our members are our customers. And this is our gift to our customers to understand that the knowledge that you just got today, uh, even if you don't go to the class, if you take a couple of those things, you will move a step ahead. And that is thank you for being our customers and we value you all. I just wanted to say as, as a closing remark, since I was told, we as Africans must begin to build wealth. And it is going to take time to shift the way that we think because for our grandparents, land was wealth because you had a place to grow crops, to keep animals and to keep your children who will take care of you when you're in old age. Right now, we can't have the same strategy. Land can still be wealth, but not the same way that it was for our great grandparents. Let's build wealth in Africa. God bless you and see you all in class. Have a great, great evening. Thank you so very much. Uh, and uh, for the great, the great opportunity, uh, the CEO, the National Executive Committee, PSK, led by the CEO, uh, the Treasurer, PSK, members of the National Executive Committee, joining us tonight, Dr. Uh, Michael Mungoma, the President, PSK in absentia, and the National Governing Council at large, and to you, the member of PSK. All we have to say from our end, happy Customer Service Week. Na mbapo tumefika musho na tamati wa somuletu la leo mimi sina budi ila kuwapa shukrani uh, kwa uh, shukrani zangu za dhati na kusema asanteni sana kwa kuwa nasi hadi tamati uh, wa somuletu la leo. Sina budi ila kuwaaga na kuambia tupatane wiki ijayo katika somu lingine. Atuduwe ni somu lipi litakuwa uh, wiki ijayo. Lakini tupatane uh, wiki ijayo uh, katika somu lingine. Muwe na wiki njema uh, Mwa na wiki njema na iliyo na fanaka mwenyezi Mungu alinde alamsiki alamsiki